As the format matured, it would become abundantly clear that X Saber was the deck to beat. The deck would dominate the top cuts of numerous events for months to come. However, the Shining Darkness did in fact support other decks and provided them an opportunity to swim to the top as well. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. So we've reached June of 2010, and that last match should have given you a pretty clear indication as to how the format was developing. Infernity, Blackwing, Lightsworn, these were all extremely explosive decks that unfortunately could not stand up to X-Sabers. See, X-Sabers did something that none of these decks could, and that's played through hate. Black Wings couldn't really stand up to Consecrated Light. Gadgets couldn't really stand up to Cyber Dragon. Infernity couldn't really stand up to DD Crow or Thunder King Ryo. Lightsworn couldn't stand up to Light Imprisoning Mirror, and Monarch couldn't stand up to Mask of Restrict. What did that leave? X Saber, a deck that could play so effectively through hate that it was favored heavily in games two and three. This is Billy Brake's second place list from YCS Chicago in June of 2010. And by this point in the format, X Saber was topping more than every other deck combined. It was an absolute powerhouse, due in no small part to a misruling, if I remember correctly, about XX Saber Dark Soul. During the end phase, if this card was sent from your side of the field to your graveyard this turn, you can add an X Saber monster from your deck to your hand. This is a clarification of the old text, which is, if this card is sent from your side of the field to the graveyard, add an X Saber from your deck to your hand at the end phase. This meant if it left the graveyard, you could still activate it. If it was sent to the graveyard multiple times over the course of the turn, you would get multiple triggers. Dark Soul itself was a house, and it's not hard to see how it carried this really powerful deck, already clawing on the edges of viability with stuff like Rescue Cat and Air Bellum into tier zero status. So today we're going to be playing a match that was played at that tournament. It is the top 16 match, Billy Break on X Sabers versus Frog Monarch. And if you look at the breakdown on Yu-Gi-Oh's coverage page, you get a sense that Billy was not supposed to win this game. <laughs> but Billy Break is one of the all-time greats in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh-ing. One of the most exciting plays he made during this event was while he had a Ryo and a Gold Sarcophagus in hand versus a Light and Darkness Dragon, which had 2300 attack, he elected to pass rather than a uh, normal summon the Ryo, activate the Gold Sark, set it to 18 and attack over the lad. He draws into a trap stun the next turn, normals the Ryo, sets the trap stun, passes again. His opponent attacks with the lad, he activates the trap stun, light and darkness dragon's mandatory effect decreases it to 1800, it crashes into the Ryo, and Billy is able to activate the Gold Sark he had been saving the next turn propelling him back into a game that he absolutely would have lost otherwise. This patience, this game sense, is really something that takes a lifetime to perfect, and Billy is one of those individuals who does have it. He's also an individual who has gone on to have an amazing career at Konami. A lot of the old heads from this period, like Jerome, uh, did end up eventually working with Konami in uh, some form or another. So, I hope I can pilot this deck even half as competently as he did, and take some games off of Alex. Let me go through the card by Card. We've got DD Crow, pretty clear main deck inclusion at this point. It just hits too much. We've got uh, Gores the Emissary of Darkness, Rescue Cat, Sangan, Summoner Monk, uh, one copy of Thunder King Ryo with two additional copies in board, which came in very frequently. Double Air Bellum, one Pa Shul. Uh, this is just an extremely powerful card. Uh, two Bogar Knight, three Dark Soul, one Emmer's Blade, Triple Fall Troll, Double Fulham Knight, Book of Moon, Brain Control, Cold Wave. Very, very critical to this deck's success. Giant Trunade, Gold Sarcophagus, Heavy Storm, Mind Control. Mystical Space Typhoon, Bottomless, Gotham's Emergency Call, very 
good both with and against X Sabers. Royal Oppression, somehow still legal. Solemn Judgment, Starlight Road, Torrential Tribute, Trap Dust Shoot, and Trap Stun on the side. We've got Consecrated Light for all manner of dark decks. We've got Cyber Dragon for gadgets to make Chimera Tech. We've got DD Crow for everything. Thunder King Ryo for everything. Saber Slash. This destroys face up cards on the field. Just a general good inclusion in the board. Crevice into the different dimension, <laughs> making its appearance from Prague Playoffs. Uh, this was a pretty good way to keep cards out of the graveyard. And unlike things like the Transmigration Prophecy, it played very well against cards like Substitute, which could search a Ronin Totem from deck after shuffled back in regardless. Double Dust Tornado, one copy of Light Imprisoning Mirror, Double Mask of Restrict, Mind Crush, and the second Royal Oppression in the board. In the extra, we've got all the hits Chimera Tech, uh, Ally of Justice Cataster, Arcanine Magician, Armory Arm, Black Rose, Brianac, Colossal Fighter, Goyo, Magical Android, Mistworm, Stardust, Urbellum, Godums, and Double Hunlay. So with that, Let's jump in. I just have to say, as an avid monarch enthusiast and a follower of our Lord and Savior, Rise of the Storm Monarch, I am hyped for today's episode. We are going to be bringing Frog Monarch to today's duel to contest what is arguably the best deck of the format at this point, X Saber. Now, this is a variant of the deck I never personally got to experience because, as a lot of you know, I was on hiatus at this time, but I really wish I did because Frog Monarch is actually considered like one of the strongest Monarch variants just because the frogs add a completely different element and layer to the deck that makes it just completely separate from the Monarch decks of the past. And so we're going to go ahead and do the card by card. First up, we have three copies of Battle Fader. Battle Fader is fantastic for two reasons. One, it actually allows us to potentially not die in the face of an OTK. And against a deck like X Saber, that's very good. But it also puts a monster on the field, which we can then tribute for a Monarch. So it's a fantastic tool for both reasons. We've got three copies of Caius. Caius is probably maybe the best, if not the second best to Ryza, because being able to banish and also dealing a bit of burn damage is pretty strong all around. Ryza resets the draw, which I actually value a little bit more highly, but banishing is also pretty good as well. We've got two copies of Dupe Frog. Now, Dupe Frog is particularly strong in this deck because since Substitute is actually legal at this point, we're able to end on a dupe lock if we want to lock our opponent out of attacking. Now, if they have any bit of removal, then it's easy for them to break this. However, there are positions where it isn't very feasible, and as we've seen before, this can actually be a very threatening lock to be under. We've got the copy of Gores. We're not really playing much back row, so Gores is live a lot of the time. I actually like this deck because it plays a Junk Synchron, which actually enables some additional follow-up plays going into the extra deck. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Three copies of Light and Darkness Dragon. This is like an honorary monarch for all intents and purposes. Being able to negate literally everything is just crazy, and it's pretty easy to get two monsters on the field. When we have access to Treeborn Frog, when we have access to Ronin Toten, the monsters can stack up rather quickly. I also love this deck because it plays a single copy, and this is not a joke, of Obelisk the Tormentor. This is hysterical. This may be the first recorded deck in Yu-Gi-Oh's history that plays an Egyptian god card and tops a tournament, but but in a deck like this that gets a lot of tribute fodder on the field, this card's not bad. Like, this card's actually okay. There's been a few points throughout history where Obelisk has been a playable option, and this is one of them, and if we can fist of fate Joseph's face, oh my god, that is going to be absolutely epic. We have three of the Lord and Savior, Rise of the Storm Monarch. Only one Rodent Tonin. This actually perplexes me because in a format where a lot of people were playing DD Crow, I'm actually shocked there was only one of this in this deck because I feel like you would want to play at least two just so you have multiple in case one gets banished, but you know, I didn't play back then, so whatever. We've got Substitute to cycle through our deck. Ideally, we want to get all the frogs out of our deck, so that way we're just basically drawing live card after live card as frequently as possible. And then we have three Swap Frog. Swap Frog is everything you could ever want in a Monarch deck because not only does it special summon itself to the field, it can get Treeborn Frog or Ronin Toten into the graveyard on top of it, and then you have fodder for a Monarch. It can also just fuel your graveyard. Like, it, it Card just does everything for a Monarch deck, and that is why it actually was the heart and soul of a deck like this. We're also on two copies of Thessalos. Thessalos is particularly strong because your opponent's going to keep their best cards close to the chest, and being able to rip them out with Thessalos can actually really disrupt their key play. The burn damage is marginal at best, but it could make a difference. We've also got a Tragodia just as another sort of hand trap monster to drop onto the field, and two copies of Treeborn Frog because it comes back every single turn and gives us fodder for a Monarch. For the spells, we're 
Piranha Brain Control, a Cold Wave, a Creature Swap. This is very funny to give our opponent a frog for their best monster. Triple copies of Enemy Controller. I just love we get to play all these cards that take our opponent's monsters to summon our big ones. Heavy Storm, Mystical Space Typhoon, and three copies of Soul Exchange. The extra deck's a bunch of cards we have already seen up until this point. I don't think what we've seen, though, however, are the Junk Package. So we have a Junk Archer, a Junk Destroyer, and a Junk Warrior. All of these require Junk Synchron specifically, and so having this one of in this deck gives the deck a little bit of flexibility and has some other options that you can go into down here. Junk Archer actually has the ability to target a monster your opponent controls and just banish it, even though it will come back. You're actually able to clear stuff out of the way that may be annoying for you to deal with. Destroyer can actually just destroy cards, which is good, and then Junk Warrior is able to get a lot of attack power. So I just like the flexibility of a card like this. Is it very good? We'll have to see. And then some of the other usual offenders at the end here. For the side deck, we've got two Cyber Dragon for the machine-oriented deck. So we got three copies of DD Crow, one of the all-stars of the format. One copy of Phantom Dragon. Uh, this card has actually done work for us in the past in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! So maybe we will side deck this in. Lightning Vortex is a very good board wipe. Two copies of Crevice into the different dimension. This is a card that was side decked around this time. It was primarily for a deck like Infernity, but you could arguably maybe play this against a deck like X-Saber if you declare Earth, because then you can actually get rid of some of the things that Fall Troll might go after or Gotham's. It really depends. I don't know if we're going to play it, though, because it is a trap after all. Two copies of Divine Wrath. This can just hit a myriad of different effects, and because it's a counter trap, that means that your opponent is most likely not going to be able to respond to it. Three Dust Tornado to deal with back row, and a Gotham's Emergency Call of our own, which will 100% probably be going in in games two and three. Guys, that's it. It's pretty straightforward, and it's Monarch, so you know I had to play it. So let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Well, Joseph, first you play X-Saber, then I play X-Saber. Now you're back on X-Saber. We're just ping-ponging back and forth with this deck. But to be fair, with it being one of the best decks of the format at the time, we figure we have to give it a good showing, don't you think? Yeah, uh, I do feel bad. I feel like we didn't really give Gladiator Beast the respect it deserved. Um, so we are not going to make that mistake again. You know, uh, you all thought that we were going to... Um, let you all see a variety of decks that were good. No, this is about representing Yu-Gi-Oh! as it existed. And as it existed, it sucked. It was so <laughs> many X-Saber mirrors for like a year. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't get much better. And uh, the next episode in particular, uh, we we will say it's not X-Saber. There won't be X-Saber. But uh, that, does, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll save that for next time. We'll save that for next time. I'm excited though, buddy. I get to get back in my good old roots of playing one of my favorite archetypes in a way that I actually never got to experience it, which I'm kind of uh, envious of. You never but, uh, played We'll see what Frog happens. Monarch? Never. Oh, I never man. had the chance. I was on get hiatus. Excited. When would I have played this deck? I don't know. It can be bad and you played in a subsequent format. <laughs> That's true. That's, I mean, progression series has taught me that, but in any case, uh, I'm ready if you are, buddy. <laughs> I am as well. Uh, I'm going to hold up a number of fingers. Just tell me if it's even or odd, baby. Okay. Uh, I have a better idea. We're going to do the rock, paper, scissor generator, and I have a reason for this. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So... So go ahead. How many fingers were you holding up? We'll do that for the number of refreshes. How about that? I was holding up two, baby. One for each stroke of the X. All right. So we will do one, two. <laughs> so the reason I'm laughing is because the patron I'm shouting out today is don't listen to him, MBT. He actually got rock. Thank you for the support. <laughs> and that wasn't shit. scripted. That actually happened, and I actually got rock. I didn't purposefully take rock because what? I would like to beat Joseph at every opportunity in rock, paper, scissors, but that could not have happened any funny. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I am, I am really happy to have won this die roll because, you know, while it didn't really matter too much throughout Edison, whether you're going first or second, it certainly matters now. Uh, yeah, but I agree. Two, uh, I'm disappointed because it really just strikes a bullet through the heart of my theory that you are cheating. So we. Will I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Ran RNG is RNG. Oh yeah, you know? RNG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it seems to only RNG in one direction. However. 
All right. Good uh, luck, buddy. Let's me. see what you got. Good luck to you. Uh, I have a really, really sick open for you. Are you going to be able to out this board? I don't know. Looking at my hand, that <laughs> might be debatable. I'll, okay, that might help things a bit. Anything in standby. Okay, we'll go to main phase one, and I guess we will just start off with a soul exchange. Okay, that's fine. I will sack your dark soul. Mm -hmm. And with that, I am... Oh, it's Ember's Play. That actually is soul. way better. Holy shit. That's so much better than that. Uh, I am going to bring out a Ryza the Storm Monarch, my Jesus favorite card. Christ. That's fine. I have no problem with We're that. We're going to send that back if that's okay. Yep. You're thinking about it. We'll hit for 24. Oh, and you'll hit for main, 24? You think I forgot oh, for you activated soul exchange? Sorry, soul exchange, oh. soul exchange. I'm not hitting for shit. Go ahead. Go ahead. My right. bad. My uh, bad. My draw bad. phase, I'll activate MST targeting your back row. I needed that. It was my enemy controller. You didn't need that. You're fine. Uh, I'll set one card and you are good to go. Okay. Resetting the same one. I'll drop. Anything in standby. Main phase one. So if it's Emmer's Blade, then that's bad. If it's Dark Soul, that's also kind of bad. You know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to sack the Ryza for a Kaius. Let's get him out of here. You have got to be fucking with me. Uh, th there were so many oh, punishes. Oh, outplay. Oh, sir, that's actually a dark monster. You're going to take a thousand damage, damage. And you're going to take another 24 on yeah, top yeah, of it. Is that fine? That's fine. All right. And I'm not under soul exchange that time. So go ahead, buddy. Oh, oh, this is going so well. Yeah, this is rough. Okay. Um, Looking in that extra deck, that means you got something up your sleeve. Is it an exceptional play? <laughs> I'm going to normal summon X-Saber Bogart Knight. Okay, that seems pretty good. I'll special summon an X-Saber Full Helm Knight, and then I'll pass. Interesting. So Full Helm Knight will actually be able to blank one of my attacks. So on the current board, I can't really do a whole lot to you. I'll draw. Anything step by. Nope. Go to main one. Uh, What do we want to do? All right, let's go to battle. I'm going to attempt to attack Full Helm Knight. Sure. I'll go ahead and negate it. Second main, I'm going to normal summon a Substitute. Uh, sure. I'm going to activate the Toad. I will oppression here. Just had to have the oppression, huh? All right, fine. Uh, Toad's not going anywhere uh, except the graveyard. And I'll pass. Go ahead. All right, stand by main. All good. This guy has so much attack. What the hell? He's swole. He's swole. Big old boy. I'm going to gold Sark here. Not a lot of good stuff to banish here. Uh, you have a lot. You've got like Rescue Cat. I mean, there, there's so many just good one-ups in your deck. It's got to be Rescue Cat, of unfortunately. Then we'll just uh, switch these bad boys to defense and you are good to go. All right. We will draw. Go to main one here. That's kind of sick. Got one in hand. You're going to have some time with the gold Sark. Okay. I'm down. Uh, I'll soul exchange. Let's get rid of the full Helm Knight, probably. Yeah, and uh, we're going to bring out a Thestalo, so let's get out the card in your hand. It is a heavy storm. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. That means oppression's not going anywhere anytime soon. I cannot attack you. I remembered this time, so I will pass. The best card in my deck? Damn, that's crazy. Go ahead. Draw. Uh, yeah, it's turn one on Gold Sark for you, by the way. Uh, we will just go to battle. Yep. Hit with Thestalos. Yep. And we'll hit with Caius. I'll take 24. And second main, I don't really want to play into Torrential or anything, so I'm just going to pass. Hmm, stand by main. Take your rescue cat, sir. Yeah, I don't know how much it does for me. Given it would have done a lot for you if you still had that heavy storm. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. So we could storm here. Damn, I straight up would have won. As is, things are looking pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to normal summon rescue cat. I will activate the effect. I'll negate it. All right, we, uh, we, did, we did good there. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> Game two. <laughs>
And I'll set one and pass. Go ahead, buddy. Draw for turn. That's one. Turn one on, on Gold Sark. All right, let's go for an Air Bellum. Ooh. Can we get a card out? Good. You're going to get a card out, unfortunately. Woo. So go ahead and take your pick. Uh, I pick this one. Why? Joseph, I'm so why? good at Yu-Gi-Oh. You just You are so good. I'm I'm simply the best there is. Uh, I'm going to set one. You are good to go. We'll draw. Anything standby. Nope. Main one, I'm going to start by special summoning a Cyber Dragon. That is fine. Uh, at resolution, I, I will activate okay. Mask of Restrict. Gross. Uh, okay. Well, that's going to put a thorn in things. I will Dust Tornado your Mask of Restrict. Well, I tried. Uh, sure. You got a second one? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good. Uh, let's go ahead next. Air Bellum's kind of a problem, if I'm being honest. I'm going to go to battle. I'm just going to try to kill the Airbellum. That's okay. I'll take uh, 500 here. And second main. Damn, in retrospect, I probably should have done this a little bit differently, but that's okay. Uh, I will sack the Sidra for a Ryza. Uh, with Pryo, we will go ahead and send that one back to the top. Uh, I'll chain it. It's just a book. Sure, that's fine. Uh, go ahead, buddy. Over to you. All right, stand by. Give me my cat. Kitty, kitty. All right, uh, stand by main. Let's go uh, cat effect, I suppose. That's good. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Please tell me you have targets. <laughs> no, I do. I'm just, I'm dumbfounded that XX Saber Dark Soul is a fucking beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. I talked about this last episode. That's so crazy, right? <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's also the end of the game. I'm going to send oh, Arabellum and uh, Dark Soul to the graveyard after I special summon a Fall Troll from my hand. Oh, perfect. All right. Uh, let's go Dark Soul, Arabellum. That's going to trigger the Arabellum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for Hunley here. Uh, Would you like are... to pop your own back row? Ooh, I'm thinking about it. That sounds pretty crazy, right? Uh, I'm actually Could be an just going to go for Fall Troll. Sure, that's fine. We're going to bring back the uh, the Arabellum. Uh, we're going to link these two off uh, for a Gotham's. And then we are going to Gotham's Emergency Call, targeting Dark Soul Air Bellum. Sure. Uh, I'm going to activate the effect of Gotham's pitching Dark Soul. Uh, let's grab this one. There goes the Caius. Uh, we will go to combat. I'll go 24, 31, and 16. And let's get this one. Which one? It didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dueling folk? The one closest to your deck. Closest to my deck? Uh, that's the brain control. And then Gotham's the last card out, I imagine. I am going to go for it, uh, sending the air bellum. This is where I think I made the misplay. I could have brain controlled your air bellum uh, and then sacked for this lad to prevent the uh, rescue cat, but I felt it lost to potentially too many things. It does lose but... to a very specific card in my hand. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> I'll proceed to end phase and resolve two independent triggers of Dark Soul here. Sure, anyone's game anyone's <laughs> game could happen could happen either way uh we're gonna get uh bogart knight and fall troll number two okay uh, uh, i don't know go. what sort of miracle i'm gonna need to pull this off uh we'll see we'll draw that is not the miracle uh i will get back this treeborn frog and it, then buddy. i will immediately hit the conceive button <laughs> 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 uh, save Kicking myself for not going into that light and darkness dragon. Uh, I, I don't even know if you could have done anything about it, but it would have been better than just straight up losing to uh, Rescue Cat. I can't wait for that card to get banned. I'll be honest. Does it get banned? <laughs> I actually don't know. It gets banned, I believe, in September of this year. How? Uh, which I think is part of the reason why the X Saber decks slightly start to fall why, off. Why did... <laughs> remember what they took from you. Oh, how could we lose the most fair card ever? I love the Rescue Cat's legal after like being good in like six consecutive formats. Very funny. Oh, right? speaking of very yeah. funny, this hand is a it's a it's a laugh riot. Uh, this one is interesting as well. Good luck, buddy. Uh, I forgot we get to draw for turn in this format. That's fun. Uh, let's see. I will start by special summoning a. Uh, yeah, I'll special summon a Swap Frog. All right, sure. We're gonna pitch this Ronin Toad. That's a good start. Suppose we'll just dump a Treeborn Frog to the graveyard. Seems good. It's not terrible. Yeah, uh, I will go ahead and bring the Swap Frog back to my hand. Boo, leave him on field. Oh. Let him say hi, come on. No, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, as much as your frog would like to, or my frog would like to meet your cat, I would prefer that they don't meet anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think I'm pretty content with that. It's so weird playing this right. deck because just it's just like nothing. you have an empty field like half the time and it's like kind of okay, but then you also just play this deck that can just go off like crazy, which kind of terrifies me. Yep. I think, yeah, I'll just pass. Go ahead. I have a couple of outs that win me the game here. I'll be honest with you. Well, let's see them. No, that's uh, that's not one of them. Uh, that is really not one of them. I'm going to show you the most powerful card in the game. I'm talking about a card that has absolutely defined multiple formats. A card that cannot possibly be bested when you summon it on an empty board. I'm talking about my top I'm deck. listening. Sangan, motherfucker. Let's get the Sangan <laughs> beats going. Get in for a thousand. I was like, it's either Sangan or Rocky Gura, but I don't think you would summon Rocky Gura on an empty board. <laughs> do you play Gores even? I guess we'll find uh, out. Uh... I don't play Gores, but I do play Trigodio, which is pretty nice. Yeah, you can Trigodio all you want. Uh, so you take, he's what, a 24 right now? Correct. All right, sure. Um, I am going to go to main phase two. I will Sark here. Damn, Sark in the opener two games. That's nice. Uh, we'll see if I live long enough. Uh, I'll set one card, set this, and you are good to go. All right, we'll draw. Yep. Uh, anything in standby? Heck no. All right, well, we will get our good old friend Treeborn Frog and head on over to main phase one. As you exit standby. Oh, I see. This is how things are going to go. Well, thankfully, I have a heavy storm. I was going so to say, thankfully, this that. is how you have heavy. <laughs> You have <laughs> removal. Of course I do, Joseph. Of course I do. Uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and sack off this Treeborn Frog for a Ryza the Storm Monarch and send that Sangen back to the top. Yep. Uh, I'm under a bit of pressure here because you do have the Rescue Cat, so part of me is tempted to just go all in. The more I go in, though, the lower the Trigodia gets an attack, which kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. So I think we're actually just going to proceed to battle. I don't think I can increase your clock here all that much. Uh, so we're going to go 18 and then 24. Yep. Got a Gores for me or anything? I don't. God, I wish. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, second main, I think I'm just chilling. Go ahead. All right, stand by main. Could have drawn anything. Uh, I'm going to normal anything. Bogard Knight and try and get over the 1800 attack point Trigodia. All right, so I'll take 100 here. Yes. And uh, you are good to go, buddy. Let's go ahead and draw. Standby phase. We will bring back good old Treeborn, and I really need to find a way to kill you here. So let's see if we can make that happen. Go to main one. Mm -hmm. You get the cat, which is pretty good. I will sack the Treeborn for a Thestalos. What do you mean you need to find a way to kill me? This works fine. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Let's see what we hit out of your hand. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. You're going to take 600 from that. Yep. <laughs> so I'll put you at 32. If I attack, 5 is 27, 24, uh, 3. 300 short, but I can special summon this swap frog Another by pitching guy. this treeborn, and that might actually do it. That will do it. Yep. You got it, buddy. Will it really? Yeah. No gores? Holy shit. We beat the rescue cat clock. It was oh a my god. Double fall troll. <laughs> I needed any spell oh. trap. Or another Bogart That would have been Knight. a disaster. Uh, so I did have a I did have a cold wave if you had anything like to try to stop this. So. The hand was Bogart Knight, Fall Troll, Fall Troll, and I was like, I just need one fucking X Saber and I win the entire match. One card. Match. But no. One card. Could not get it. Oh, there's the Dark Soul. Five wow. cards deep. That is a I'm down one. for another I'm down for another one. I mean, we could. These games go super quick. Oh, I'm good. I'm, I I feel pretty good about this one. I mean, I, I got to pop off game two. Um, uh, we saw that, like, True. if you get the rescue cat in rotation, it is really hard to uh, to lose. But uh, you can get out aggroed to that position. I think maybe if I... No, even if I set the Bogart Knight, you just walk over it with the Trigodia. Yeah. I mean, that, that was a tough spot to be in. I mean, my hand... I actually got very lucky. A, because I had a way to out your Mask of Restrict. If I didn't have a way to kill that, then I couldn't have been able to summon any of these Monarchs. And B, speaking of the Monarchs, I drew Ryza and Thestalos back to back. My hand was all frogs and like... Cold wave, heavy storm trigger. You're really gonna so. tell me that, buddy? <laughs> I am really gonna tell you that. But to be fair, my deck has like 14 tribute monsters in it, so it's not unlikely I'm going to draw them. It's not like I'm playing six monarchs, like it's Reaper format or anything. My deck has 19 X Sabers, and I couldn't find one to save my life. Uh, That's fair. That's fair. Has way less than that. Yeah, but like you said, we got to see what both decks do really well, right? Mm -hmm. We got to see the X Saber deck just pop off just to its entirety. We got to see even the Frog Monarch deck to a degree pop off, and it just showed just this recursive loop with Treeborn Frog. And as long as you're able to just get a monster on the field, sack a thing, like I mean, it's just traditional Monarch stuff. Mm -hmm. But I actually really like the Thestalos in here. Like Ryza and Caius were pretty standard at this time, but Thestalos is nice because typically you're holding your best card for a later turn mm -hmm. and being able to rip it with 
Thestalos. Arguably, that won me game one, getting your Heavy Storm out so you couldn't destroy your own oppression to Rescue Cat under oh, it. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, just having a card like that. It, it, Thestalos, I think, has always been one of, like, the underrated monarchs for that reason. And so it's cool to see that even in 2010, people were still respecting it by playing it in a deck like this. So that was fun. I mean, I had a great time with my first experience with this deck. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun stuff. Your first experience with Frog Monarch. <laughs> Buddy, you were born to play this deck. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, it's because it's simple enough that it's almost idiot-proof, Joseph. That's so why. So I go to 29 if I take just the Thestalis and it doesn't hit a monster. Yeah, that's still not enough to live the Swap Frog. Uh, you even had to have the extra water in hand in order to make it work. Ah, It's, it's frustrating when everything goes right uh, for one player. Uh, I actually boarded <laughs> into... A card that I, I was really surprised to see show up in lists, but was an absolute house during this time. That's Crevice into the Different Dimension. Uh, I had this in my side deck as well. I was thinking about it, but I just didn't have room to sideboard it in. So what was your theory? Just get the frogs out of my grave? Yeah, preventing the Treeborn Frogs and the Ronin Totems from recurring is pretty important, I suppose. But um, yeah. the reason that uh, you see Crevice into the Different Dimension start getting played, um, despite the fact that Transmigration Prophecy is legal and good enough that it was limited to a single copy, uh, is because of card Cards like Substitute, like putting a Ronin Totem back in the deck is not a good idea. Not good. <laughs> if uh, they could just swap Frog to uh, send it back to the graveyard. So uh, as a result, you need to start banishing. And that's like the rise of DD Crow as a response to these sorts of strategies, the rise of Crevice into yep. the different dimension. And uh, unfortunately, it has the, uh, the downside, these cards, of pushing out almost everything but X-Saber. Um, it means that Infernity has to compete with super targeted spell trap hate. It means that uh, Frogs yeah. has to compete with super targeted spell trap hate and um, has to pivot to, I mean, we know Frogs as a control strategy that sets back row, but this is a strategy that I think is playing like five traps total, right? What's scary about Crevice too, and this still blows my mind, this deck played one Ronin Totem. I shit you not. And it wasn't just this deck. It was all of like the Frog Monarch decks from around this time that top were just on one of this. And I guess that's just shocking. I feel like they play minimum two with DD Crow, with Crevice, with Transmigration Prophecy running around because... If you lose that resource loop and you don't have Treeborn, like you're kind of stuck if you just have a hand just bricked full of monarchs. So I, I thought these people were playing with fire only doing one of this. But, you know, I, I guess you, if you lose it, you lose it. And you know, there's not much you can do about it. I think that's probably why they're playing multiple Treeborn frogs. That makes the most sense because that's always going to come back. And it's free because we play basically no back row in this deck apart from the sideboarded Dust Tornado specifically for Mask of Restrict. But uh, which you yeah, happened to find. I did. I did. I still lost that game. I don't know why you're complaining. But yeah, no, uh, sick decks. Uh, happy to be repping X, X Saber again. I now have a zero and two win rate on them. Uh, apologies Perfect. to Billy Break. I couldn't get it done. Oh yeah. And Joseph, can I just say, uh, we didn't talk about the elephant in the room or rather the obelisk in the room. This deck plays fucking obelisk the Tormentor. How did I lose to this? You drew Runner, Ryza, <laughs> Thestalos, the Firestorm Monarch. Any turn, if you had just drawn fucking obelisk, I would have been fine. <laughs> But no, no, I'll be honest with you. I cited it out game two, but I brought it back in game three just for the possibility that I could remotely kill you with this. the deck sensed your <laughs> doubt. That's why you lost. It did. It did sense my doubt, 100%. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't you guys worry. Uh, if you're ready to see more frog action, uh, you're going to want to tune in next time because yeah, Joseph be will be... Yeah, it's going to be bad. We'll just leave it at that. But in any case, we have to shout out the patrons as always. Big shouts to Shout 1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Chaotic Meatball, uh, SJ Winchester, Tim Zero X3, Ike Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Dan Menhoven, Synchro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wilds, Draconic, Rockslide, Dolly Wop, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Cole T, Thomas Nelson, Yusuf Asin 05, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Lee, Rockley 325, Lane Rogers, Chat God, Silent Age 216, I Siding, Grand Maju, and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Brett Harvey, John Two Based, at the Astro, Brody Eastwood, Dacer, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speedoid or Give Me Death, Matthew Elliott, MBT's Hard Like, Ashlyn Jensen, Cypher P on Perp 6, TC Gaming, Matthew Brady, Edison Format, Ash Blossom Toast Sniffer, Dr. Solace, Max, and Tom Russell. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.